Welcome to episode 2 of Tractor Stats. Today let's talk about John Deere's Model 3020. And as you'll see I've got the 148 loader up in the air so I can give you a little bit more access to see a few things on it. Uh, these tractors were made from 1964 to 1972. This one happens to be the first year 1964. 64 to 68 were considered the early models. And as you'll see, you can tell this is an early model because it has the round muffler and it has the hydraulic controls on the dash. There are a few other changes, but those are ones that you can tell from a distance pretty easy. The majority of the tractors were made in Waterloo, Iowa, with some in Mexico. Of those, 74,463 were row crop. 6,307 were standard, 1,314 were row crop utility tractors, with 508 being high crops, 324 being special utility, and 139 orchard tractors. The 3020 replaced the 3010, and the 3010 on paper replace a 6030 or 630 rather not 6030 big difference so 630 3010 3020 although there's a pretty good size difference in between a 3010 and a 630 and a pretty good size horsepower difference between a 3010 and a 3020 the size bigger tractor than this would have been a 4020 which would have been a six cylinder variant and the smaller tractor for the first few years at least was a 2010 a few years into the model, they came up with a 2510 to kind of split the difference and have something in between a 2010 and a 3010. But the 2510 came out actually as the 3020s were coming out. It's kind of an odd numbering system. The 2510s, like I said, by the time they came out, the 20s were about out. The available engine options would have been a 227 cubic inch, 3.7 liter engine if it was gas or LP. If it was diesel, it would have been 270 inch or 4.4 liter. Although I feel like the diesel would definitely have better low end torque, they all showed to make about the same horsepower, making about 65 horsepower with a power shift transmission and about 70 horsepower if they were equipped with a synchro range. I'll put that up here now. Where the diesel really shined was the low end torque and the fuel economy. As you'll see, the diesel will use quite a bit less gallons per hour. Transmission options were the 8-speed power shift, as you see on this tractor, or the 8-speed synchro range transmission. A few differences there. The power shift had two hydraulic filters, where the synchro only had one. The power shift held 11 gallons of hydraulic oil, where the synchro range tractor only held 8. With the power shift transmission, you got 4 reverses, where the synchro only got 2. The power shift transmission had a rated top speed of 19.5 miles per hour, where the synchro was 17.6, so about 2 mile an hour faster with the power shift. These tractors have a 90 inch wheelbase, which is measured center to center. The overall length is 138 and a half inches, and this tractor would weigh 7,645 pounds in a gas variant and 7,945 pounds in a diesel variant operating weight. They have 540 and 1,000 PTO switchable right there. You take this shaft out, turn it around, and put it back in, and that'd be 1,000. But we're mostly 540 equipment here on this farm. Category 2 three-point hitch. This tractor is a single remote. Uh, two remote was an option. We're talking about PTOs. The 20 series and 10 series tractors had something that you didn't see after this in the 30s and 40s. Didn't stick around real long. But they had a mid-mount PTO. 1,000 RPM. PTO was used with a mid-mount sickle mower. 
and I've seen a lot of people use those for pumps. They put pumps up there for a sprayer or other things. A few interesting things about the 3020 and 3010 versus the two cylinders, which was a complete remodel. Um, the fuel tanks went from being above the engine to now the 10s, 20s, actually all the way up into the 55 and 60 series. The fuel tanks on the front, rather than being over the engine. The air cleaner is under this screen. Let me remove that. The air cleaner's under here. This doesn't have a paper air element air filter in it because I swapped this diesel engine out of a 1966 3020 because this 20, 3020 was originally gas when I got it. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos on this tractor, I've talked about that a little bit. This was my grandpa's tractor and uh, I diesel swapped it because I wanted diesel but I wanted to keep the tractor. I'll put a link to the video I also featured this tractor on Tractor Stories. I put a link up above right now if you want to watch the story of how I come about this tractor. But under this screen, we've got our fuel tank, our air cleaner, and let me show you the other side. You'll find your hydraulic oil cooler and, of course, your radiator. There's other things to check on the tractor. Our engine oil dipstick is here. And guys, I've got this back cover in the shop. I had it off and hadn't found its way back on. But it makes it a lot easier to check the oil. So engine oil's there. Hydraulic oil, unlike the 520 or the two cylinders, we only have two fluids on this. It makes it real nice. We have engine oil and then hydraulic transmission oil. Um, these run high guard. I know a lot of people use 303, yellow bucket, whatever. I really recommend high guard in these tractors, especially with a power shift. If you use cheap oil, it can really do damage on these wet brakes. There's our hydraulic oil fill. There's our dipstick. And this is not normal to a 3020. I did that. I made it so I could run the three point from here instead of just on the dash. Um, if you'd like I'll link a video to that if you want to see how I kind of did a workaround to make this work like a side console not necessarily a side console but now I can work this from to the right of the seat instead of the dash this is where you would pick if you're going to be in depth control low depth which is half between or low control what that means is I'm in depth control so no matter what pull on the tractor, it will stay at that depth, that three-point setting. If I go up here to full load control, that means that it will vary the height if I'm pulling a plow to give me more traction. So if I'm going, I start to spin out, it will actually pull up on the plow a little bit. And it's kind of like an automatic thing that uh, would help me plow as the plow's drafting. If I start spinning out, it'll actually pull up on the rear end of the, or pull up on the plow and pull down the rear end of the tractor to give you a little bit of extra traction. Besides that, this lever, being that this is a power shift, goes to our power shift lockout. It, there's a clutch, a small clutch, that disconnects the power shift transmission to the engine. It works for cold weather starting. So, you pull that back, it locks, and then if I can do it, you pull this knob. I don't know if I'll be able to do it and hold you guys. Let me see here. You take and pull this knob and let it back off. That was clear as mud. Up here, my three-point is still hooked up on the dash, so I can run it either way. This is the factory three-point. This is my hydraulic remote. And see this cover? This would have been here if this tractor would have came with two remotes. Up here on the dash, that's our hydraulic pressure. Make sure you have pump pressure. That's checked at 2200 RPM. As long as it's over that line, you're good. 
There's our water temperature, our tack. You see my needle's broken. Fuel gauge that's never worked. And the other one was trans temp. This is trans, or I'm sorry, the other one was trans pressure. This is trans temp. You see that gauge is in need of replacement. And over here, this is our PTO. Back is off. That engages the PTO. If this tractor would have been a synchro range. It'd still have the PTO on this side, but it'd be a long metal. The handle would be more out here. Kind of a longer throw handle on these early 20s. On the late 20s, like the 4320, which I'll be doing next, the PTO was here. No, this stuff wasn't here. The PTO was right here. And then we had a side console here. We come down here, we've got our key switch. We've got our knob that we can set the, this is actually a stop, so you make your three point stop at the same time place every time. Our key switch, our transmission lockout uh, release knob. This switch was added back when Grandpa had this tractor for the radio. We got our light switch lights brights and dims and off and being that we're back in the 60s everything had to have a cigarette lighter on it of course um as you see i've added an oil pressure gauge because i don't trust idiot lights and another thing i've added this thing used to kind of like to come out of park so i know it's far from original but i've weld a little knob on there so because otherwise it was just like that and there's been a couple times where this thing has actually popped out apart that's not safe for anybody of course we have the throttle i put it down so you can see the shifting so throttle setting more throttle less throttle and then to kill the tractor we pull this out and go on up and then to start the tractor, we we'll have to pull it down to the resets. This video is really about the 3020 John Deere tractor, but being so it has a loader on it, let's talk about that for a moment. Um, this is a 148 loader. Another option was a 48 or a 46. Uh, both of the 46 and the 48 were both an older loader. The 46 was quite a bit lighter, and you can tell a 48 by it will have just one cylinder here instead of having the two tilt cylinders um, this 148 loader i have added a work saver skid steer quick attach which i wouldn't take the world for um, this loader is rated which i think is quite a bit i don't know that i'd put that much on it but 3100 pounds lift at the pin so i could put 3100 pounds right there it's also rated at that lift pin to lift 126 inches so that'd be uh, 10 foot 6 inches and it has a breakout force of 4700 pounds a dumped reach so if i've got a bucket on it and going over like a dump truck it's ready to reach 32 inches and uh, the weight of this loader is 1350 pounds favorite thing about this loader and one of the things that grandpa actually spent some money on back in the 80s was he had the wobble stick installed rather than run them off the remotes or some 148s had a, um, a framework coming back with two handles right here but that uh, I call it a wobble stick that was a lot nicer um, right here's your main hydraulic tee off so the hydraulics come out of this T into this valve box and that goes up to the loader and I'll show you where it returns on the other side. After the hydraulic gets used by the loader, the oil, let's see if I can keep from shaking you, is plumbed. That's not factory. That was added and that's a hydraulic filter. So the oil goes through the loader, does whatever task it needs to do and then when it's put back it dumps back into the filter 
I hope I've gave you some good information on the 3020 John Deere. Um, if you got any other, anything else that you'd like to know about it, something I didn't cover, let me know. As you see, I've, which stays on this tractor most of the year, the hay bale and roller. Um, I really like this thing. Um, also did a video on that, why I think if you've got cattle, you should have a hay bale and roller. And uh, I'm going to link a link to that video up here now. But anyway, guys, uh, man, this was a big difference from a 630. Probably not much of a jump from a 3010 to this. Besides the PTO on the back of the 3010s were a little different, and those were problematic. A little smaller engine. I don't have a 3010 here to compare. Uh, but these tractors, when they came out, I mean, if you watch my 520 video, can you imagine setting on that? And then that was 57. Here we are in 64. Just a, you know, a, a short, what, seven years later. And, and we're looking at this. What an improvement. But if you have anything else you'd like to know, um, I'm, there's a lot of information I know about this tractor, but there's probably some stuff I didn't cover. Any questions about 3020s? Um, this one's been in my life longer than I've been here, so... Or I guess I should say this tractor was here before me. But if I can help you with anything, let me know. Um, if you like this video and you got time, be sure and watch another. And if you don't care, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment. Tell me if you got a 3020, what you think about it. and uh, Or if maybe you're wanting to get a 3020. They're good tractors. Uh, for the same money, I'd go with a 4020 just because I think that six-cylinder runs smoother. But this tractor being short and nimble gets around good. Um, and... As I told you in Tractor Stories video, it'll be here as long as I am. Come back for more. 4320 is going to be next. Appreciate you. Bye.